let's talk about white Portland cement. What it is, where it comes from, how to use it, differences between the ordinary Portland cement that's gray and white Portland cement. All this and more will be answered in this video. Stick around. So what is the difference between ordinary Portland cement and white Portland cement? Well, as you can see, one is gray and one is white. And primarily, if you want a real short video, that's the difference. You can just use them interchangeably. They're so similar that you actually can just do that. You can use them interchangeably. You can even mix them together if there's a reason that you wanted to do that. But probably you don't want to do that because if you mix gray with white, you end up with gray again because that gray really likes to be gray and wants to stay gray. So the cost of the white Portland cement being so much more money than the gray stuff means that you probably wouldn't want to do that. If you're paying the extra money for white Portland cement, you probably have a specialty application in mind and it probably doesn't involve mixing gray Portland cement with it. So white Portland cement is pretty much compatible with everything that ordinary Portland cement would be compatible with. There are a few notable differences, which I'm going to touch on in this video, but essentially speaking, they're the same thing. You can just use them interchangeably. The reason why that the white stuff costs more is the process by which they make it. They have to be more selective with their materials. The white Portland cement has a very, very low concentration of iron or iron oxide and manganese. And these are very important because that's what the gray cement has a lot of, or a lot more of, let's say. In order to maintain this very, very consistent white coloration, they have to have a very high degree of control over the raw ingredients that they're using. Further to that, the process to make it changes a little bit as well. The white Portland cement fires at a higher temperature than the ordinary Portland cement during the manufacturing process, and that end up costs money, that's fuel that has to be spent. And further to that, the type of fuel that's used for white cement and for gray cement is not necessarily the same. Gray Portland cement is fired with natural gas as the fuel source or some sort of petroleum, whereas the white has to have a more strict tolerance for impurities that might be introduced during this firing process. So this, uh, again, all just represents additional cost, which ultimately gets passed down the line to the consumer, making white Portland cement considerably more expensive than ordinary gray Portland cement. And that's why you don't really see, you know, a lot of white sidewalks and driveways and roads and that type of thing. So it's essentially the same thing. It's made in a more selective refining process using slightly more expensive materials and processes making it a more expensive product, but again, ultimately the same thing. It works functionally the same way in a concrete or mortar mix as any kind of regular or ordinary Portland cement would. Common mix proportions for white Portland cement with sand to make a mortar might be one to one, which is to say one volume of Portland cement, one volume of white sand, let's say, and make a white mortar product. Two to one, probably the most common, one white Portland cement to white sand, that would give you a common mix for something like a pool plaster. That would probably be the most common example I could name. Maybe another one might be stucco, though the mix might be a little different than I just described. These are the primary places that you're going to see white concrete applications and the mix proportions. Again, exact same that you could and would use for any regular concrete mix. You could use three to one in terms of one white Portland cement, three sand. It's going to give you a slightly more grainy texture than a two to one or a one to one mix, but it's going to give you more bulk and economy of yield. Because again, this white Portland cement is expensive. White sand is not necessarily the cheapest thing either, but it's definitely more affordable than the white Portland cement. Probably hard to see in there. I'll show you this another way. So in my left hand, I have ordinary Portland cement. In my right hand, I have white Portland cement. They look pretty much the same. Like, I mean, with the obvious coloration difference aside, but there actually is a mechanical difference here. And it's something that you would note when you start to work with white Portland cement. Some of the first things that I made, I noted immediately, oh wow, this white Portland cement stuff that I'm making mortars usually 
it set up lightning quick, like way faster than the gray stuff I was working with. And at first I was thinking, oh, I wonder if this is just a function of, a, I got a fresh bag, you know, it's really new, so it actuates quickly. And what I learned over time is that's not the case. What it is, is that the white Portland cement has a finer grind consistency to it than the gray Portland cement. Again, this is part of that process, which costs more to make it, you know, than the gray stuff. The end result to the, you, the user, is that the finer grind Portland cement hydrates faster than the gray stuff and ultimately leads to early high strength or a fast initial set. This is something that you might know already from type three concrete, a slightly less, or type three cement, which is a slightly less common type of cement than type one or type general use. But this is the one that you would use if you needed a early initial set. You need high, you need a lot of strength, but you need it really quickly. It's a very specialty application. When you have something like that, how do you go about getting it? Well, the answer is, is that they take regular Portland cement and they grind it even finer. And the end result is just as the white Portland cement, it actuates the set faster because the smaller grains are able to hydrate faster, more thoroughly. And again, end result, it just sets up really quick. It appears to get hard a lot faster than what, you know, the gray stuff is or does if you're pouring it right next to each other, twice as fast or more. So do you have to use like brown sand with gray Portland cement and white sand with white Portland cement? Like well, you don't have to do anything. It's all kind of interchangeable and you'll get different results in terms of the coloration. But if you want to experiment with any kind of vivid coloration, when you're talking about concrete applications, aside from dramatic acid staining or something like that, you pretty much start having to explore white Portland cement and then a white aggregate like white sand as well to give you a nice neutral base to build on to add pigmentation and color to it, whether through latex paints or iron oxen, uh, oxide pigmentation that you can add. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do it and you can make some really bold and dramatic colors but not so much with the gray Portland cement. Like you can, but it's definitely subdued versus what you can get when you start with a white Portland cement and a white sand base. Look at this example here. This is 2040 white lightning. This is the stuff that you use commonly for sandblasting. It's available at a lot of hardware stores. That's why I picked up a bag, a couple of bags. It's very clearly a salt and pepper color there. I mean, it's primarily white, but definitely a lot of pepper coloration. And yet look at this. Here's a bowl that I poured using two parts of this white lightning or silica sand product with one part white Portland cement. And then of course, as you can see on the table here, compared to the counterpart here, it's distinctly more white. And it is notable that regular gray concrete, it's pretty light in color already. Once it's fully dried, fully cured, it's a little bit older, it's darn near white already until you put like something like a white Port Portland cement creation next to it, you don't realize how dark of a color it is because it is pretty dark. And in terms of that finish color, it seems very similar. But in terms of let's say we added a pigment to both of these mixes, the gray versus the white, the gray will not accept the color the same way that the white will. And you would get much more dramatic coloration with a white mix versus the gray counterpart. Right about this time in this video, you might be thinking, great, I'm sold, I'll take a bag of it. So where do I buy this stuff? And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good answers for you here, but I can probably give you some information to work with. White Portland cement is definitely hard to come by in some areas, darn near impossible in others. And there are some trades that do work with this stuff pretty regularly. Swimming pool workers for concrete swimming pools use it for pool plaster, and stucco workers use it for stucco commonly. And so if you can find out where those people are shopping, maybe you can locate some in your area. If you only needed one bag, because maybe one bag of cement, almost 100 pounds of cement, lasts you a long time for the kind of stuff that you make. You see a pool guy working on a concrete pool, you're like, how would I know? Well, is there a giant cement truck outside with skids and skids of white cement on it that some poor guy is breaking over a mortar mixer? Offer them $100 for a bag and see if one doesn't just drop into the trunk of your car. So I'm just saying there's ways out there. You can track this stuff down, but ultimately the real way is you find a specialty concrete supply store. They exist. They provide the general contractors and the masons and the concrete workers of the world. Find out where they're shopping. See if you can't set up an account. Sometimes they're pretty strict about selling to the open public. Sometimes they're pretty lenient and they're happy to have the business. This stuff here is actually manufactured in Woodstock, Ontario. 
And I've known that for the entire time that I lived 5,000 kilometers from Woodstock, Ontario, when I was working on building and renovating concrete pools, that's when you use a lot of this stuff. And interestingly, the bags always said manufactured in Woodstock, Ontario, kind of in big letters. I think they were proud of it. I don't think it says it on there. They must have removed it at some point. But I now live like down the road from these guys. And I contacted them and I'm like, hey, I use your products a lot and I have for decades. And I happen to have this big reach through YouTube channels, maybe not the one you're on now. Small reach on this channel, bigger reach on my swimming pool channel but I reach a lot of people and they ask me a lot of questions about your product. I'd love to buy a couple bags from you. Maybe come take a look at the place, you know, have a talk with somebody. And oh boy, they told me to kick rocks. <laughs> they definitely weren't interested in talking to me or what I was selling. And unless I was willing to commit to buy a tractor trailer's worth of product from them, basically the conversation was over. So I don't imagine you're going to have much better luck than I contacting these guys Give it a try if you want. Most likely you're going to buy it at the retail level. Regular hardware stores mostly don't carry it. There's a couple that do. There's a few that might order it in for you if you ask extra nicely. Most places don't really stock white Portland cement. I find that that's not really a commonly stocked item. So how much does this stuff cost? Like it's, it's not a million dollars. It's just three times, maybe a little bit more, give or take, the price of the alternative, the regular, ordinary Portland cement. And that might not sound like a lot of money, especially if you just pour little trinkets and bowls and stuff like that. But if you're pouring driveways and pool decks and patios and sidewalks, it sure adds up pretty quickly. And that's why you don't use it from like a ready mix plant showing up with a truck full of white concrete for you to pour your patio with. So that's it. It's not that much money. It's pretty much the same thing. You can do a host of really cool stuff with it. It works really well. It sets up really fast. It's strong. It's hard. There's no reason to not get into working with it if you are into decorative concrete or working with concrete as a hobby, save for the exception that it's just so difficult to track down. So maybe take a look in your area, see what you can find, do the Google search for specialty concrete supply store or specialty concrete wholesaler, things like that. See if you can find somebody, go old school, give them a call. That's usually the best way to get some help from people. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you.